Hi everybody, my name is Mr. Cramper and today we are going to work through the first of our homework videos that you'll have in your United States history class. Now normally these videos are going to last somewhere between five and ten minutes long and rarely I will, if ever, I'll go over ten minutes with the exception of today. And the reason for that is there's uh, some information we have to get through, which will be normal. At the same time, we've also got to, we also have to uh, make sure that we're taking our Cornell notes the right way as we work our way through these videos. Okay, now, let's get started. Uh, first thing you're going to see on these slides is a title screen. The today, uh, the title of today's notes is called Expansion of Industry. So on your Cornell notes near the top somewhere, I would go ahead and write Expansion of Industry. And also, if you haven't done so already, I would write down today's date. This is just going to keep us better organized for the semester. We got a long time with one another. Okay. The next, sli next slide here you have in front of you is the concepts slide. And on this slide, you're going to see questions posed that we are going to start getting answers to as we move through the presentation. Okay, so the, uh, the questions that we're asking in to for today's slide are, why did the Industrial Revolution happen? What are the differences between the first Industrial Revolution and the second Industrial Revolution? What effects did the Industrial Revolutions have on American society in the 1800s and early 1900s? And what enabled the Industrial Revolution to succeed in the United States? And now, before we go any further, I want to stop everybody and say that we should not write this stuff down. Right? These videos are going to be posted online. You're going to be able to go back to them. Right now, all we want to do is see them, read them, hear them, and then keep them in the back of our mind as we work our way through our notes. Okay? Since these are videos that you can uh, always go back and watch again, well, if you need a refresher as to what the concepts are, you can come back to this slide and see them. Yeah. Now on this next slide, same thing as the concept slide. This one is titled Key Vocabulary, but there is a big difference in that is, uh, or excuse me, there is one big similarity, and that is we don't want to write any of this down. We just don't need to write any of this down. Okay? So you have entrepreneur, bankruptcy, capitalism, all the way through industrialization. We're not going to write any of these down because... They are posted online. You can always go back and review them. Writing them down at this point would be sillier than anything else. Okay. Um, as far as the key vocabulary that you see when we have a slide uh, or a presentation, is these are present. These are vocabulary words you're either going to hear about in this unit or right around the uh, time of this presentation or you're actually going to see in the presentation itself, see or hear in the presentation itself. Now, industrialization today is going to be the key one or the main one that you'll hear from uh, or hear in the presentation. And you see what it means here. Machines are going to replace hand tools and large-scale factory production is developed. Okay, and in the United States, that means it's happening first, at the very least, in the North. Okay. Um, again, you forget what it means, you can come back to the slide, take a look at it, and give yourself that reminder. Okay. Some of these you will hear about, some of these you will not. But industrialization, you'll hear a lot about today. Okay, now on this slide, this is essentially the beginning of our um, of our information gathering that we have throughout the year, and this is where you're going to want to begin taking notes on your Cornell papers. Okay, and for us, 
this idea of the expansion of industry is going to begin with the first industrial revolution. That's where we see the revolution, um, the the expansion of industry, and it's happening in the late 17, uh, early 1800s. And the idea of the industrial revolution is that we are moving from uh, hand-produced goods to machinery making the goods. Okay, and within this time period period, we're going to see the decline of the cottage industry where people that um, weave cotton instead of that happening within the home, it's now going to move into factories. Uh, we're going to see the, uh, we're going to be introduced to people like Eli Whitney who made the cotton gin which made cotton much easier to pick. Uh, and therefore more profitable. He also came up with the idea of interchangeable parts. Um, we are, were introduced to Robert Fulton, who was creator of the steamboat, um, and much more the Lowell Mills, uh, the creation of textiles and factories. This is all happening during the first Industrial Revolution. As we make our way through the 1800s and get to the late 1800s and early 1900s, that's the period known or often referred to as the Second Industrial Revolution. Okay? And we're going to be introduced to people like, uh, these are people you might already know about. They are uh, like Alexander Graham Bell, uh, Thomas Edison, I have another one written down here, Henry Ford. Um, they are, they are entrepreneurs, they are inventors, and they've all come up with their own invention during the uh, second industrial revolution. And it, it's during this revolution we're really going to see mass production of goods take off. Okay? Now, the similarities between the two, one of them is going to be the secondary revolutions that the Industrial Revolution has an effect on. Okay, so with the Industrial Revolution creates the market revolution where we have people no longer selling just in a small local area but selling, um, selling goods across uh, the region or even nationally. Uh, today, like we see that very much globally. Uh, we also get the transportation revolution because of the Bessemer process we end up with uh, uh, steel which allows us to build things like railroads. Now I gotta get this, um, I've gotta get this book name read to you because it's a long title but there's a book called Creating the 20th Century Technological Innovations of 1867 to 1914 and their, la la and their Lasting Impact this book suggests that the difference between the two revolutions, the first and the second, is one of science. That the, secondary, that the second industrial revolution has a science quality or aspect to it that doesn't exist in the first. Okay, so during the first revolution we get such things as steam, iron, interchangeable parts, textiles, but during the second industrial revolution we get a more science-based discovery okay. steel is an example of that alloys railroads chemicals um, electricity all have science components to it and those are some uh, that's the, the main difference between the two industrial revolutions okay now anytime or uh, I don't want to say any time, but throughout the history, one of the key things that is needed for this industrial revolution are going to be key resources, and the United States has key resources. And one of the, uh, I shouldn't say one of the, the main natural resource during the 1800s is going to be coal. Uh, we still use coal today, but uh, it has kind of a negative connotation because of the pollution that it has um, attached with it. Okay. Oil is our big energy industry today, but during the 1800s, oil is used, but on, only on a very small scale. Even after it's um, 
it really the discovery of more and more oil really begins in the late eighteen hundreds, but it's the use of oil is really not going to take off until World War II. With that said, oil is one of those key natural resources that will encourage the second industrial revolution to continue um, and boom. And another key resource is going to be iron. I mentioned the Bessemer process earlier. The Bessemer process is the process in which you take iron, you take the carbon out of iron, and you end up with a product called steel. And you see that you get that science quality qual uh, component to it where you're taking out the carbon and you create this uh, really durable metal called steel. And it's going to be put into use big time with the railroads that are created throughout the entire um, back half of the 18, uh, 1800s. Now one of the key elements or key results of the secondary revolution is going to be the mass production of goods that are created. But to fully understand how we get there, we need to go back to the first industrial revolution and take a look at what Eli Whitney, uh, his idea of interchangeable parts. If you see the gun on the right of your screen, and be right up here I believe, um, you see a gun broken down into all of its parts. Now, it used to be that if something went wrong with the gun, you'd have to replace the whole gun. But his idea of interchangeable parts changed that. The concept here is that if a piece of the gun went bad, well, every other piece in that same spot of the gun would be the same. So you could replace the part, not have to replace the whole gun much cheaper. Now if we fast forward to the second uh, second industrial revolution, Henry Ford comes up with the idea of the assembly line. And when you take interchangeable parts and you added the assembly line to it, what Henry Ford found was he was able to make cars cheaper because he was able to make them quicker, which is which allows you to sell more of them and how much it took to make individual parts of the car was much cheaper. Therefore, his profits went soaring. And that's why the Model T becomes the most affordable car in the early 1900s. And why Henry Ford becomes so famous, not just because of the car, but his idea of the assembly line. He revolutionized how to make the car or make a, a piece of machinery very quickly. Okay. Now moving on uh, or continuing with the idea of the secondary second industrial revolution, I already mentioned it earlier. We and we'll just go through the names here really fast and see what they did. Uh, but there are plenty of people who did uh, lots of things. Uh, new inventions, many entrepreneurs in the second industrial revolution. Christopher Scholes, he creates the first typewriter. Remington is going to come out with the typewriter later. Thomas Edison, um, many have heard of him before. Uh, he is His work revolves around electricity. And Alexander Graham Bell, we have him to thank for the phone. And then there are uh, many other inventions at the time, and I have some others listed here. The camera is going to be introduced. Gramophone, which is similar to a record player, but comes around before the uh, record player, technically. The Gatling gun uh, cash register. We actually see um, uh, diving headgear. Uh, allows people to dive deep into the water, airplanes, etc., etc. Okay. Now, what is the big deal about industry? And really, it is the beginning of a very long process. Industrialization is the beginning of a long process of changing the United States from a very rural country in the beginning of the uh, of its uh, at the conception of the nation in 1776. Okay? It's very very rural. Okay. And slowly it is going to change it from a rural 
society like Thomas Jefferson thought the United States would be, and it's going to change it to a very urban nation, which means large cities, people are going to flock to these cities, and with that you get ideas like capitalism, capitalism takes off, we get labor unions, and then eventually we even get the um, kind of the antithesis of capitalism, we get communism and socialism.